So, Chris, did you incorporate any calculations of non-exercise activity thermogenesis? Yeah, so, so that's the, um, where I think like the step counters and things like that come into play. Yeah, so I have a Fitbit. And, and I, before I, I did as much with the Polar Beat app, I did a lot with the, the Fitbit. Um, because I would sometimes use that as my way of getting more calories in, to eat. You know, like within any any day, um, and not so much during this past like seventy five days, but in when I've had like weight loss goals in the past, I found that to be like an easy way. Like I'd be watching TV and I would just kind of do some arm swings. I might jog in place, um, but I would just be not sitting. Was sort of the idea while I would be doing things that I'd normally be sitting, right? Mm -hmm. And I that has become more of a habit for me too, where it's not always stuff that is accumulating steps but if i was going to monitor something that i was going to use in some equation it would be a step counter that i would use to monitor that but like just not being on the couch and being on the ground like i do a lot of mobility work while i'm watching tv so i'll just have my ground sitting postures which i put in my book um you, you haven't gotten to chapter 12 yet right no i haven't that's the so the next chapter then is like ground sitting postures which connects to the uh, neat chapter because that is the getting up and down off the ground, like changing of bodily positions. Mm -hmm. um, but I am not really moving as much there. It's just like holding posture, breathing, and but changing my posture, you know, often. And I'll sometimes use a timer for that where like every two minutes, I just change into a different position for like 20 to 30 minutes. Okay. Um, so it's, you know, it's, it's hard to, to say like, what would be purposeful exercise but i think the idea of that chapter to the distinction to be made there was that you're not in a, a place of stillness as long because I, I did try to make that distinction at one point where there was the study that talked about just the the time sitting mattered more than how much people were exercising in a way yeah. right so like you couldn't eradicate all of the downside of sitting for eight hours just by exercising for two or you know these I mean? were these were like cardiovascular outcomes and all-cause mortality yeah right? yeah yeah it was connected to that and um you know and i think that's kind of like a new realm of and, and i've heard that in a, maybe in a couple studies but I, I i doubt it's like perfectly robust you know but and, and you hear that and then it, it gets like kind of a popular culture type of uh, momentum to it but yeah. I do. I, I think it makes sense to me, and it certainly fit into what I was trying to explain. There is that I think people they have to do more than they think actually when they want to make changes to their body and to their metabolism. And even if you feel like you're doing a lot consistently, it, it's it's not just about the time that you're in the gym exercising. It's about like kind of the plan that you might have for changing your attributes, right? It, it's, and it, it might seem obsessive, but it just becomes like habitual, right? Like you're paying attention. So, and you're paying attention to the things that you want to change, right? Instead of guessing or trying to, you know, like compartmentalize it, it's just really like, it's a part of your day. Like if you are, you don't have to not, do things either i think like that's why i like to exercise while i watch tv i love watching tv i don't i don't give that that up for anything but it's also like become an association to move more than an association to like veg out right um so i think there's there's opportunities to do that and, it, and that's another thing that is an important part of being a movement professional or even like a, a psychology professional is to teach people how to continue to do the things they want to do, but just add healthier behaviors to that. Right. And, and, you know, being someone, I, I think we've discussed this before, but like I haven't had a alcoholic beverage in the last 12 years. Right. So that change for me is like really made me appreciate like what kind of exercise is from a different perspective where it's like, it doesn't have to be super specific. It's, but like for it to be healthy, because it just can be like something that is taking you away from other things that you might be doing that you, you wouldn't be as healthy for you. Right. So that's where I think like non-exercise activity can, can come into play. So just moving takes you away from like the things that would be like eating and drinking, you know, stuff that you, you consuming. 
right? Like, so when you're moving, you're usually not consuming. Right. You know? And so I think that is super important to understand. So if that's like sort of built into your, your life and in, into your culture, where you have to move more frequently just to sort of get from point A to point B or to make your own meals, you don't have as much time to, well, like be depressed in a way, but like also sit down and, and consume. Right. And, but it's, it's not that like when the time comes to sit down and consume you, you are really like specific and you're, you're like super necessarily moderate with it because it's like, it's built into the culture that you just put all this time into consuming. Now let me consume whatever I, it is I made. And that's where I think like cultural stuff comes over in, into a totally different culture where it's like, it's all about the celebration of food that was just created. But after that, the process of making it is not at all the same, <laughs> right? <laughs> so like, yeah. you know, I, I know like the Italian side of my family, there's just total celebration of food, like at every holiday. But, you know, the, the people that would make it, they wouldn't necessarily like live a life where they'd have to be farmers and have to go, make, you know, get their own uh, vegetables. They might've been used to that when, you know, like or their people that they grew up with, their ancestors might've been used to that, but like, it's just not the way it is anymore. Right. So you want the same kind of authentic ingredient type of deal, but the process is not the same to create it. Right. And it's just not yeah. going to be <laughs> like, good luck yeah. trying to make it that way. Right. It's just, it, you, I think it's makes more sense to adapt to what's like, what our culture is, which means that, I think we just need to be able to pay more attention and monitor ourselves more frequently and, and like make that important. Right. Mm.